Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Team Mom 2 Season 10, Episode 15. Okay. It is a bit cold. Late at night, I don't feel like cutting the lights on or taking my little warm off scarf off. So, we're going to let it do what it do. Um, Y'all already know to so like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, relax and relate to release into yourself and all that good stuff. Let's get on to this crazy um, TV show that should be ended. They say Ashley from Team Mom Young and Pregnant is going to replace Chelsea. Anyway, <laughs> born as Chelsea. Um, they had a gender reveal. Okay, they went to the house that's being built. Pop some poppers. Okay, they're having a girl. Yay! Or whatnot. Um, they then discussed, you know, should Aubrey and the kids go to e-learning school? Or should they be at home? I mean, or should they be in school and not doing e-learning school? Because Aubrey didn't do too good on e-learning, so they want to send her to school. But the little boy, what's his name? Watson. Watson, who'll be going to pre-K, kind of pre-pre-K, because they say he's going early, early. I'm looking like them for what now? Now, she, he likes going to school. He likes being around other kids. We should, you know, that's the thing. Cole don't want him to go. And I'm like, he's like three. He can wait a year. And I'm like, because what's the point? I don't get what the point is. Like, if you, the thing is, if you say, you know, he likes being around other kids and interacting with other children, I get that. COVID is when you're not supposed to be around other people. I'm just saying. It's the reason why they don't want the kids in school. If he missed pre-K, he'll be okay as an adult. He can miss pre-K. Now, Aubrey can't miss school school because it's school school. But Watson can can miss, you know, organized playtime. It's just a girl. Anyway, they take the son to school. He got a little pre-K cold cried in the car. Next up was halfway born Leah. Leah need parenting classes, okay? Because the twins start in fifth grade. Aaliyah is over at, uh, the girl, whatever the day is, Corey. Is over at Corey's house. And when he waking her up for school, the little girl told Corey to shut up. She told her daddy to shut up when he told her to wake up. Over at, with Addie and, and, and Leah, Leah on the phone with, with Jeremy or whatever. And she told Leah to be quiet. And when Leah said, who you talking to? I'm talking to you. I said, Leah needs parenting classes. It's, I don't find it cute. I don't find it funny when kids are disrespectful. A child should never tell their parent to shut up or to be quiet. Not at that age. I'm like, the fuck? You could say, mom, wait, let me say something. I get that. But the shut up coming from the one little girl and the be quiet coming from the other, neither one of them sound like they joking, girl. mm -mm. Backhanded, backhanded bullshit. That is backhanded BS. I, I ain't got to, that won't work around us. Okay? Don't work around us. It may work around them. Don't work around us. It's going to be a whole little fight or whatnot. Leah need to get some, some discipline in the house or whatever. Because later on during e-learning, because all three girls is e-learning at her house, the little Addie girl, mommy's on her period, so she's going to be a mean principal. I'm like, why are you talking about your mama's period on TV? Not that there's anything wrong with talking about it, but you know, it's, na it's natural. It's na but I'm like, well, who does that? And then when Leah said, you know, she doesn't act right, I'm going to have to discipline Addie. She said, no, you won't. You won't discipline me. And when she then calls Jeremy, I'm like, oh, look what she said. You know, ha, 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 ha. And then he said, I'm going to throw all the stuff away. No, you won't because you don't waste money. I said, they need parent girl. <laughs> no, no, no. Mm -mm. No, no, no. And that's all the end of them happened on it. It was all about, it, it was literally all about their first day of e-learning. Anyway, we then have Kale. And she brings up how having a fourth baby you know, has changed her. You know, this baby is harder than the others. Was all that Kel said her whole segment. This baby is fussy. This baby doesn't sleep much. This baby is it was way, way, way. You know what I'm saying? This baby, this and this baby, this is the difficult baby. This is a different baby. Okay. I want I want I want y'all to realize what she kept saying all episode. Okay. She brings up how um Chris hasn't been back to see said baby since the week the baby was born. I'm like, you complaining about Chris not being around. Chris wasn't around before. I said, when I got pregnant. 
I don't get how a man who ain't there for his kids knock up the baby mama. How does a penis go in a vagina if he ain't there for the children before? Don't get it? But Kale has matched it or whatever. Anyway, you know, the producers asked, <clears throat> what, if any, um, a parenting authority does Chris have with the kids? She brings up how he has a supervised visit. Um, set up with custody. That's the word, custody. Uh, he has supervised visits set up in place with Lux. Okay, boom. But he has nothing set up with the new kid. Now, however, she brings up how he is allowed to, at any point in time, contact her in writing about the kids, but he has never done it. He has never done much at all. You said that the whole time you were pregnant. You said that before you were pregnant. Again, I don't get how a man who is never there for his children, knocks up the mama. How does that happen? How did you get the pushing if you're not visiting the children? I'm going to leave that being with not. Anyway, she brings up how, you know, I don't want Cre- I don't want Chris involved in Cree's life at all. And I'm like, how would that happen if he has things going on with Lux and their siblings with the same father? The same father. To say I don't want him involved in Creed's life. But not mention. I'm looking like you think you're going to come get Lux and not get Creed. Okay. Is Creed his baby? She says I have to accept the pieces. You know the mess I made. And keep it pushing. You did make a mess. You did make a mess. Now the rest of the episode she complains. About how hard it is having four children. It's very, 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 very hard having four kids. Now, you knew it was hard having kids after one. You decided to keep popping them out. Okay, anyway. Now, she said when she had a baby, the midwife or whatever told her the baby seemed to be tongue-tied. Which just means um, the baby's tongue, there's a piece of the tongue that's attached to the mouth a little bit more than it should be. Which most of the time, or sometimes makes it hard for the baby to breastfeed or whatever. So usually they do a little procedure, a little snip, that's it. So she goes to the appointment to the ENT specialist or whatever, and she comes out, she's pissed. I cannot believe this girl. You know, the nurse, the midwife, and the, the doctor both told me, the pediatrician both told me that they he looked tongue tied and to see a specialist. Well, I went to see the specialist, and the specialist told me he isn't tongue tied. Why are you mad? Did you want him to be tucked out? Did you want him to get snipped? I'm looking like, how are you upset that they told you? It seems like he may have something. Go see a specialist because that's who can handle it. The specialist can say, oh, no, he's not tongue tied. He's okay. Your, your son is fine. She then says, I feel like, okay, he would just be a difficult baby. To blame your child as a difficult baby is a fucked up situation. Kale is a great mom. We can't take that from her. But to keep referring to him as a difficult baby versus maybe you're just having a difficult time. Don't blame the baby. Babies are fussy. Don't blame the baby. Sometimes it's hard to breastfeed. Don't blame the baby. Calm the fuck down. Stop blaming the baby. You are blaming the baby because you're upset that Chris is no longer around. Boom, pow, pow. Any, the baby ain't difficult. You is. Uh, next up, we have Jade. Okay, Jade and Sean. I should have got a picture of Sean too, but I can't. You know, I want to Google drug dealer, not drug dealer, but drug addicts, white male. With a beard, it'd be weird in my Google search history. Anyway, you know, Jade's the house of whatever productions back around. The producers are asking Sean, you know, to possibly discuss the argument her, or her, he and Jay had the night before with the whole he went and bought some liquor. She asked him how much it costs a fight and suit from that or argument. He says, I'm not going to talk about that. Okay, because it would cause another fight. And I feel like me and Jay don't have a problem. Sean don't want to be homeless. So Sean sometimes has to bite his tongue to what? To not be homeless. Because Jay can put him out. Now Jay should put him out. But she won't. Not yet. Anyway, I'm like, it's just, and I feel like for you to tell production, you don't want to discuss the fight y'all had in reality, even though you're on a reality show to discuss your life. 
And a part of y'all life was the fight last night. We don't want we we don't want to sit here and watch our fucking fold clothes and wash dishes. That ain't what we here for. Talk about the goddamn fight, Sean. But I'm move on now. We then see their three year old being a three year old running around, getting the stuff, yelling like they do. Walk around like just walk willy nilly like they do. Like she's basically a mini version of her mom and the daddy. But they're getting aggravated with her because again she's three and she's running around and making noise and getting into things. If y'all will stop avoiding each other, which then make y'all ignore your daughter because y'all let her just walk around and do whatever and y'all don't speak to her till she's into something. Maybe y'all did not do that. She may be better off not just walking around fucking up shit. But I'm going to leave that be. I'm going to leave that be. And Sean, who consistently called that little girl dude and gets aggressive with her, I don't like it. Her name ain't dude. Her name's Chloe. She's three. Getting pissed off because as you're picking her up, she's swinging her feet. That's what kids do. They're fucking children. Okay. Okay. Anyway, we then see because Chloe's third birthday is coming up. They take her where they all go out to the restaurant. It's Jed, Sean, uh, her mom, her stepdaddy, and whatnot. Now, they sit up there talking. And her mom says, so are, y'all, are y'all going to put her like in daycare, like in, in school or whatnot? And she's three. And then Jay says, well, no, she's too young. I don't want to do that. Sean said, I'd rather wait a year or so just to see how COVID plays out. I agree with Sean. If you can not have your child somewhere when there's a deadly pandemic going on, do that. She's three. She barely listens to y'all. She's not going to listen to anybody else. I'm going to leave that be. Leave that be. Anyway, you know, her mom then said, oh, but y'all don't want to try, like, you know, like one or two days a week? Jay then asked, well, no, because Sean is sitting at home. And why would I pay for daycare when he is sitting at home? Which pissed him off. He then say, well, I'm not going to be sitting at home for for long. I'm not going to be sitting at home pretty soon. You know, I'm going to go back to school. I'm like, oh, he has a plan. He wants to go back to school and get an education. He's going to go and get an education, do a trade. Cool. Love it, okay? Jay then said, well, you can do school and work part-time. You can, you, you can do you can do both. You do not have to just not uh, work at all. He then said, well, I want to be able to focus on school first. He said, I just let me control something in my life. And I was like, you know, I don't see an issue with someone having to focus on college, you know, to get an education. I don't see an issue with that. She say all you doing is getting a high school diploma, okay? That is not hard. You was already in school already, okay? He then say, whatever, Jade, whatever you say, Jade, she then say, well, you can leave. He then say, I wish I could. She then says, you can go to hell. He said, I will save you a seat. I said, well, that escalated quickly, okay? Her mama like, you know what I'm saying? Well, let's not act like white trash today too late. And the whole town, I'm like, hold up. He don't have a high school diploma. Girl, look. I agree with Jay. You don't have to not work while getting your high school diploma. College, I get. Because college is hard. College is all kind of shit. But a high school diploma, isn't it just one test? Is that school? Can you go back? I don't. Look, I don't think you can go back. To high school, I think you would get your GED. I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus. At this point in time, Jade is pissed. Pissed, 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 pissed. She's fussing with the producer and her mama. And, you know, she's like, you know, Sean is a lazy motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I went to school and I work too. Why can't he? The mama then say, he ain't built like you. You know what I'm saying? You are stronger than him. You know, <sighs> No one supports me, Mom. You know, I shouldn't be treated like this. You know what I'm saying? My friends tell me I should leave them, but you doing. You know what? And I'm like, you mad because your mama won't tell you to leave your dirt bag ass baby daddy? She want a yes man. Her mama didn't yes man her. Her mama was right. Sean ain't built like you. You know that. Because you've been with him for all these years or whatever. Her mom then says a, a fact. When I do that. When I yes ma'am you and say Sean ain't shit. Leave him. You get back with him. And then I look stupid. Because you're with him. And now he has an issue with me. You can't want me to back you with leaving him. And you then take his ass back and then he don't like me. 
You can't have it both ways. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not speaking now. Jay thinks I'm just, you know, everyone tells me to leave him. He treats me like dog shit. He talks about my way. I'm miserable. I don't want to take care of a 30-year-old man. I'm like, he's 30. He's 30. Sean is 30. He's 30 without a girl. She then says she done that she wants him in her house. I'm like, you, I want you out that house. Girl, Jay, you can't, you know what you need to do. Either do it and leave him alone or be with him and shut the fuck up. I don't have time or patience for people who know it's a bad situation. And no, Sean don't do shit for her that she need him for. You can afford daycare. You don't need, you don't even want him to watch the kid no more. Why are you still with him? Girl. Honey, last but not least, dumb, dumb Brianna too. Okay, so Brianna is talking with Brittany. Blah, 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 blah. You know, I probably won't talk to Devonna's family and Nova's party because I don't have a relationship with them. I'm like, shut the fuck up, girl. I, I cannot. Anyway, you know, she brings up the guy to the whole fight about the money situation, but that he later texted her or contacted her and apologized for how he spoke to her. I'm like, okay, stand up guy in that aspect of life or whatever. Um, Brittany then brings up how you know you probably should just stop fussing with that man about money because it's not even worth the argument in the end of it. Um, I don't want anyone to think that I feel like Devon should not have to pay child support. I think he should pay some child support. My point in in, in saying Rihanna be on some bullshit is because she know how much more money she makes than him. But she still wants money from him. But she also holds Nova hostage a little bit as if Devon ain't shit to her. And how he don't do enough for her. But I'm like, Devon does enough for your other daughter to think of him as her father. Stella could not be as connected to Devon if he wasn't around. And I feel like if Devon helps you in the way of being around for Nova, when we don't see not hide, no hair, no dirty dick of uh of Lewis or Lewis's family, you need to give Devon some slack. Because what he lacks in financial support, he seems to be giving your other daughter and Nova and a father figure. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying he ain't got to pay nothing. He should pay something. That's a fucking lootly. But get off that man back as if he don't do shit. And he's your only baby daddy. When you don't say shit bad about Lewis. We forget Lewis exists. Anyway. She brings the power. The reason she gets so mad at Devon and wants money from him is because of this, okay? Production was messy as hell. She says that Devon will sometimes bring this down. Devon will post on social media, as we see these three pictures that production put up. He will be posting with money. He be having on designer clothes. He had on some Gucci shoes. I said, first of all, I really feel like um, them shoes probably fake. Okay, I just feel like that because you don't wear the same Gucci shoes with, with different outfits. You just don't. Because you, you do that if it's the only thing you may own. And I also feel like he's allowed to splurge a little bit. As he, I think Devon has went without for so long. He don't know how to control his money. But I also feel like when she said he was on social media posting it with thousands and thousands. I'm like... That man probably got a, a tax refund. <laughs> it was like, I don't think on any regular basis that Devon has money at all. We can tell that because Devon always looks dusty. You know what I'm saying? He he just does. So I, I don't think he's out here, you know, big balling and shot calling and not giving you anything. Because at the end of the day, you be big ball and shot call and then consistently posting the things you have that you're able to pay for. But again, Divine needs to pay something. But I feel like she doesn't give him a credit for being there. When you have two kids and one daddy ain't never around and the other one is around enough to be an extra father, get that man some slack. Anyway, at the party. Okay, uh, at the park we do see was she rented a she she got an Airbnb house in Florida. Okay, um, 
a big ass cake that looked expensive, but I'm gonna leave that be. Um, I saw maybe three masks. The producers and the camera crew would not come in the house because there was too many people there doing COVID. It was a good 30 people in the house. None of them had masks on. Not even her mama, who I think her mama's sick. But I'm going to leave that be or not. Anyway, we do see Devon pulls up. He had a mask on outside, but he then took it off while talking to the producer. But luckily, the producer still wore a mask. You know, he brings up how, you know, he came to the party because he knew that Nova would want him there and his family there. That, you know, the 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 argument with Brianna, you know, was pointless. It was a pointless argument because um, it shouldn't have been an argument. And that's why he called her and, you know, said sorry. You know, he's like, we'll end up discussing it later. He's like, we always have these arguments, but never fully resolve it. You know, we need to start doing that. Devon seems to be, like, rational sometimes. But it could be a fake. You know, he could be a whole ass. Well, you seem to be an asshole to her. Uh, but I digress or whatever. But he said, you know, we'll discuss things later. You know, but I want this to be about Nova party. You know, we all here. Would get, like him and his whole family came with gifts or whatever. A good time was to have all or whatnot. And Nova looked to be having a good time. Now, when Brianna and her mom house started talking later on, her mom brings up how this is a good party. You know what I'm saying? Devon came. His, his family's here. And Nova looks to be having a really good time with her family here. You know what I'm saying? Hey, go, Brianna. I'm just pissed because, you know, they only come around for birthdays and, and holidays and celebrations. You know, where are they Where are they at when Nova's sick? You know, where are they when we struggling and we need help? Why are they not here to help me co-parent? I say, bitch, his family's job is not to raise your child. He's supposed to help you co-parent. His mama and daddy, none of them have to help you co-parent. That is not that. That was you and Devon's thing, okay? And my thing is, just because your mama and your sister are living help don't mean his family has to be the same. Do I feel like aunts and uncles and grandparents should be there to help the parents raise a kid? Yes, they should. But at the end of the day, it's not their job. You know what I'm saying? So for her thing to to make her for her to feel like they ain't shit, cause they won't help her raise her kid when she has a mama and a sister who live with her. She had live in help. How much more help you need? She just complains so much, and she irks my nerves. Girl, fix it anywhere. Mom, like, look, you know what I'm saying? Let the kids uh, enjoy things and whatnot. I'm saying his family is here. They've been back around for about a year. Like, that's what matters. And I'm like, damn. Nova had two birthdays this season. It doesn't shit. Anyway, I'm done. Peace.